Hi guys, in this video I will try to clarify for you the difference between placement and placements or natural placement and placements. Also things about larynx, how our larynx should behave and all other interesting things about voice. What is placement? Placement is a natural structure or learned structure of the mouth and throat. In classical vocals, natural placement is usually a stable position of the larynx. In more lighter styles, it is not a must, but in opera, the stable position of the larynx will determine how beautifully you connect your voice, how beautifully you can sing those phrases, and how temporally consistent your voice will be. For a classical singer, stable larynx means no matter how high or low he sings, the position of the larynx does not change. That's an important thing to know. I explained to you why it is so necessary and why it is necessary for classical and especially opera singers and why is it optional for lighter styles. Some singers and some even prominent teachers say that it's an absurd to keep larynx in the same position. Why one should keep larynx in the same position? It's so unnatural. If one tries to keep larynx in the same position, he will suppress his voice and his voice eventually will sound suppressed, woofy or forced. Now, let's examine this statement. Is that statement true or wrong? If we're talking about a young singer trying to keep his larynx in the same position by the force of the throat muscles and doing nothing else, I guarantee you that you will have a throttle sound, maybe consistent in timbre, but it will be a throttle sound, it could be a woofy sound, it could be very, very unpleasant sound, also called that those type of teachers warn you. So don't try to keep the larynx position stable. It's so unnatural. All I said, if you try to keep the larynx position by the means of the throat muscles. But what means should we keep the larynx in the same position. Let's first examine why larynx gets depressed, why the sound gets depressed if you try to keep your larynx in the same position and do nothing else. Because at a certain pressure comes to larynx, if you don't make a perfect opposition of the diaphragm which controls this pressure, the whole force of air and all the muscles are going to work to keep the sound alive and therefore the sound will be suppressed and will be a bad sound. But if you will keep position of the larynx by the movement of the diaphragmical support called appoggio, then the larynx will not experience the same force. It will just, or the vocal cords, if the larynx is, is the place, and the vocal cords, they will keep so-called Bernoulli effect, which means it will be free phonation. It will be phonation on the resonance, not on the forcing. So, keeping, getting back again to the statement, you cannot keep your larynx stable unless you, unless you use a poggio. Because if you try to keep your larynx stable by just yawning muscles, let's say that, it will not work. It will work maybe in a very little range. And in other words, we don't need to suppress larynx with the larynx muscles, with the yawning muscles, but with the poggio opposition. With a poggio, with the balance of the diaphragm, which is opposes the movement on the low abdominal muscles and creates perfect compression. And in this case, the stable larynx will occur naturally you will not have to suppress it 
or put it down. And so therefore the sound will be also as natural as possible. Placement is the position of the larynx. In other words, we said it's the whole structure, but if you just reduce it to the very simple thing, it's the position of the larynx and your soft palate. That's the most important thing about placement. And this placement, when it's stable, when it has a particular shape that does not change, it's, and you singing within this placement, and within the range of this placement, if you like, this placement is a natural placement. That's what we called one placement. Now, what people usually call placement sometimes occurs to be placements. So it's in a technique, certain technique, uh, that allows to change the position of the larynx depending on the heights or the lows you're singing. So the position of the larynx usually in in classical voice they consider three placements which is low or chest middle or passaggio and head is a high voice everything above passaggio the modern theory considers that as a normal division of the voice regardless to what modern position considers greatest singers always were advocates of one voice placement, which I'm talking about. And uh, this is Charlie. Okay. And uh, so this is important to know that placement, as as of placements, is when real change is occurring. When singer sings with one voice, I call it Caruso effect or whatever you can call it. It's very very integrated, very consistent voice throughout the whole register. When we're talking about the voice uh, of placements, that means that uh, the singer who uses this technique can be spotted on these passaggio notes very easily. You can see, oh, this is passaggio I hear. Oh, this is a head voice I hear. Oh, this is the low voice I hear. So basically voice more or less, it, it's, you know, it, it, it doesn't have just only one example for this. Uh, there are placement voices that are more or less beautiful because they don't use much placements, change, they use a little bit. And there are voices that are not so beautiful because they are using a great deal of placement. So they just, uh, you know, switch the larynx upon the necessity and therefore they reducing the volume, the timbre, the consistency in the voice. So that is very important to know. So what happens with natural placements when you sing. Uh, natural placement is the stable position as I, I told you. So no matter how high you sing, how low you sing, it does not change the space in here. Or in another words, it doesn't change the ambience. That what is a physically provides you with the same voice, with the same timbre. Because when you uh, manipulate with the larynx, the timbre is changing. Now, when the voice is operatic, is a big, uh, full of uh, resonance full of harmonics, that little changes that occur, they are very significant. We can hear that. When it comes to non-operatic voices, more leggero, more lighter voice, even in some classical um, lighter styles like uh, Lida, um, art songs, that change does not seem to make a big difference because of the nature of the voice. The smaller voices have less problems with that, with consistency, than bigger voices. But I don't say that smaller voices should not learn a poetry, because if a smaller voice, a bigger voice, there's a poetry, it's the perfect technique. What I'm saying is that you can get away without a poetry, if, if you have a small voice. But when you get uh, through the uh, bigger repertoire, more grand opera repertoire, then the beauty of the voice will depend how your larynx behaves, how your support behaves, all in one. So it's, it's important. Now, in placements, the larynx moves, as I said, upon necessity. So let's say you go to the passaggio points, the placement moves a little bit up to make an easier connection with the chest and passaggio. It may make you an easier connection, but it will not be beautiful. It will be not a beautiful connection. This connection, if you make it by support, by appoggio, but not 
moving and trying to do something in the throat, but rather in support, then you will have much more consistency in your voice. And that is what important. That the, the, the important message of Apoggio is to not to mess around with this area. Let it be free, let it be natural, let it be natural resonance. And building up the natural resonance upon two octaves and becoming a classical singer with consistent voice. That is an acoustic law. This is nothing uh, anybody can say against it, I, I guess. Uh, some may, may argue uh, and say, well, this is like too scientific or something. No, but the science is, is very precise. Science can, doesn't lie. Science doesn't know everything. But science, believe me, knows a lot of things that regular singers don't know. Now, in this demonstration, I would like you to pay attention on the larynx movements. As I mentioned before, you have to really understand how it works with appoggio. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Maybe even going to be dangerous. Uh, so you need to support this movement, first of all, with the diaphragmical opposition. Now, this is, I'm going to demonstrate you F sharp and F sharp from low F sharp to high passaggio, so-called passaggio F sharp. And I'm going to give you four different versions of this particular passage. And I want you to pay attention on the larynx, or maybe I want you first not to look at what I'm doing, to be absolutely unprejudiced, and uh, decide for yourself which sound you like better. I repeat, which sound you like better. And then uh, check it out with, uh, with the demonstrations and with the real uh, video. And then you will see if uh, uh, what I'm saying is true to you personally. Uh, and uh, you can ask me questions after. Okay, so let's start the demonstration with F sharp and I want you to watch and I'll close the camera to my larynx uh, so you can actually see the larynx in action and in sound. Let's start right now. Now, if you really want to be unprejudiced about it, please don't watch this video first. Just listen to the sound. Oh. 